Hi, I'm Brian Prieto for doing High School Biology. Today's topic, protists, part two. Remember that a protist is generally a unicellular eukaryote. However, it's still a very generic term because the kingdom protista is being broken up as we discover DNA evidence and new structural evidences. Here is the second part of the protist lesson. And we're going to discuss just two groups today, Stramenophila and Amoebozoa. All right, first up, Stramenophila. These are more plant-like than other protists. First up, we have the di diatoms. These are just about the most abundant underwater protist, and they have these glass-like shells made up of silica. This will only take five seconds if you're with a computer. Go to Google Images and look up diatoms. They are some of the most beautiful things you can see underneath a microscope. All right, next up, golden algae. These have a yellow, brownish pigment in them, and yes, they do perform photosynthesis. However, they can also be heterotrophic if they want to. Then we also have brown algae, more commonly known as seaweed. What do we do with seaweed? Well, yes, some of us do eat it. Um, these are one of the few exceptions to the unicellular rule of protists, because these are multicellular. Last up, water molds, things like mildew. You might go, wait, I thought that was a fungus. Well, see, fungi are multicellular, but water molds are actually unicellular, but act in colonies, and when they come together, they do form sporangia, but they are, in fact, more protist-like. All right, next up, amoebozoa. Shockingly, amoebas are in here. Now, the big thing you need to know about amoebas is how they move, and that's by creating a pseudopod. So let's pretend amoebas are almost perfectly round. What will happen is they'll create an extension of the cell, cytoplasmic with cell membrane surrounding it, a thing like this, a pseudopod. If you will, pseudo, like a, but an imitation of, and pod. Well, a foot, really. A fake foot. And so it used that to kind of pull its way along whatever it's going. I've tried to illustrate that here. It's gone from here to slightly higher up. Anyways, amoebas. Some of these live on the ground. Some of these actually will parasitize other organisms. They're mostly heterotrophic. All right, now we get into slime molds, and there are two types of slime molds. Plasmodial slime molds and cellular slime molds. Here's the big difference. Plasmodial slime molds get a bunch of cells together and form something like something called a plasmodium. That just covers a big area, and it feeds like that. When it's out of food, it'll produce little fruiting bodies and release spores. The spores will go end up somewhere else, and if there's enough food, the spores will become amoeboid or like a flatulum. These, of course, are interchangeable. If you start out as amoeba, you could change over and have a flagellum, and ultimately they'll group together and form another plasmodium. Cellular slime molds are very different. Instead of spending most of their time as a plasmodium, they actually spend most of their time as amoeboid cells. And then, after a while, they'll start congregating to form fruiting bodies. And this is, again, when the going gets tough, when they're out of food. And the fruiting body will explode spores out, and again, they'll form these things, and be mostly amoeba, then come together and form another slime mold. These also have a form of sexual reproduction where two cells will actually fuse together and create a new cell. All right, to recap, this covers the second half of the protist lesson. Remember, the protist kingdom is rapidly dissolving into other different groupings as we discover DNA evidence and structural evidence for different groupings of protists. First up, Stramenopila. This consists of diatoms. These are abundant underwater and have glass-like shells made up of silica. Golden algae. These are both heterotrophic and perform photosynthesis, but they have a golden, yellowish-brown pigment. Brown algae, more commonly known as seaweed. These are multicellular and water moles, things like mildew. While they act a lot like fungi, they are in fact unicellular. Also, we're going to look at the amoebozoa group, which has amoebas. Amoebas, you need to remember, form pseudopods, if you will, fake feet where they push forward parts of the cytoplasm and cell membrane and then pull themselves along. They're all heterotrophic. Some are on the ground and will actually take on dead things. Others will be parasites. Plasmodial slime molds and then cellular slime molds are the two we're going to look at. The big difference is plasmodial slime molds will live in a plasmodium, a big grouping of cells for most of their life, and then when the food runs out, form sporangia and send out their spores. Cellular slime molds, on the other hand, take most of their life as single amoeboid cells, and only when the food runs out will come together and form a sporangia and release spores. They can also reproduce sexually by bringing two cells together and creating a new cell. All right, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.